Aloha and welcome back to Physical Therapy for a Better Life. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist, board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. We all want to look and feel our best. And that has been a challenge in this new world of working and working out from home. And regardless of age, we all have seen or even tried trendy, fad, weight loss, and workout routines, especially during the past two years of being more restricted and shut in. Today, unfortunately, I had a last minute cancel, but I am going to do my personal best to debunk these trends and give you what you really need to know to lose weight and get your desired body with a little consistency of nutrition and exercise. So first, I want to talk about one of the biggest secrets to weight loss or getting into some sort of personal fitness or workout routine, and that is to make small changes and not be hard on yourself. The reason why I say small changes is because if you want to get to say, I want to lose 10 pounds. And you may say, I want to lose 10 pounds in four weeks. And that can be realistic for certain people. However, you can also lose 10 pounds in six months and really enjoy the process of getting there. Now, I've read a couple books over the years that have inspired me in my life, in my business, in my quest to get my message out about how to have a better body, feel your best with less pain. And they have really helped me. And one of the things that Darren Hardy said in his book, The Compound Effect, which I'm going to hold up right now, it's a fantastic book. It talks about making small changes in the short term for a huge payoff in the long term. And he gives an example in the book about how a woman, I believe this example is in the book, how a woman wanted to lose weight and he was trying to figure out okay, well, you don't have to dramatically change your lifestyle. What you can do, what do you do that's extra calories? And let's make an example of, say you go and you have a Starbucks coffee, which is how many calories for a cup every single day, and that's your routine and you love it. You can either cut back five Starbucks coffees a week and lose those 10 pounds in a month, or you can cut back one Starbucks coffee a week and lose that 10 pounds in six months. Either way, in the long term you're still gonna get to your goal. It just depends on how much short-term sacrifice you wanna have. The same thing applies to a fitness routine. Let's say that you are not a fitness person. You don't like doing exercise routines or lifting weights and you just found out, say you have osteoporosis and you need to get some more meat on your bones to create more stress on your bones so that you can get more calcium and have a safer bone structure. You really need to lose weight, uh, to lift weights but you don't need to lift 10 pound dumbbells. You can start off by doing a five minute routine three or four days a week and then compound that over time. And that is the biggest message that I wanna talk about. So if we're talking about fad diets where you're gonna go all no carbs, low, uh, high protein, no fat, those are all those trendy fad diets that are there to give you the maximum weight loss in the fastest amount of time. And honestly, who doesn't want immediate results? I always want immediate results. It's something that I work on myself, which is why I've read these books is to try to get my mindset healthy on realism and how can I get to my goal consistently? So I'm gonna quote you a few things from this book, Take the Stairs by Rory Vaden. This book is fantastic. And actually my dad bought this book for me when I moved into a fifth floor walk up in New York City. And I thought at first, I don't know what it was, a joke kind of a book. And I read this book and honestly, it changed my life about how to have certain times where you work on certain things, like a certain season where you can be productive and a certain season where you can really focus on health and wellness and a certain season where you can spend more time outdoors, living on the East Coast in Connecticut and New York City. We have lots of seasons that, are challenging. So the winter time where there's not that much daylight might not be the time to start a fitness routine. And so I'm going to quote Rory Vaden right now because it really inspired me and many of my patients in their quest to try to motivate themselves to get into their home exercise program or motivate themselves to change their diet even just a little bit to get that short-term sacrifice for that long-term 
benefit, that long-term lasting gain. And so Rory says, as it turns out, success really is as simple as choosing between taking the escalator or taking the stairs. And I know probably most of you have heard that a lot of people say at work, whenever you can take the stairs, don't take the elevator. And for me as a physical therapist, that point is huge because if you're sitting all day, like let's say before we are all working from home, if you were sitting all day and the only thing that you would do is get up and walk to the water fountain or get up and walk to the bathroom at your office, we used to recommend, you know what then, when you go out for lunch, take the stairs. That way you get some exercise. Uh, another example is when I was living in New York City, I was wondering why everybody was so lean. And my sister-in-law, Michelle, told me, well, it's because we walk everywhere. And I thought, I was young at the time. And I said, oh my gosh, walking is not the best exercises. How do they get so slim just from walking? And then I lived there and I walked up and down subway stairs every day and I walked all over the city. And even I myself became more lean. And I, I just, I kind of, what do they say? Seeing is believing. I couldn't believe how lean I got just from walking around the city and walking up and down stairs. So Rory also says success is the aggregate sum total of small, seemingly insignificant choices that when compounded over time, create the trajectory of our lives. And I want everyone to hear that point. Small, seemingly insignificant choices that are compounded over time. So if we're talking about a trendy fad diet, which really restricts your calories and doesn't give your muscles and your body the fuel it needs to think clearly and perform, we want to change that. We want to think about, okay, so how can I restrict a little bit of what I enjoy, whether it's having dessert every meal or dessert every night? And let's say you cut back on dessert three times a week. If you cut back on dessert three times a week, then that's say 400 calories times three, that's 1200 calories less during that one week that you are consuming. And so over a month times that by four, and that's what you get a calorie deficit. So you notice not in a week, but you notice in two months that, wow, my pants are feeling a little looser or wow, I feel a little bit more energetic because I have a little less weight on my body. Now, the same applies for physical therapy if you're doing an exercise routine. I used to tell people in New York City, set a timer, seven minutes a day to pain-free. I don't need you to do 45 minutes. I don't need you an hour. I need you to do something. I need you to do something to change your body for the better so that you can be in less pain, have better posture, have better shoulder position on your rib cage so you don't have shoulder pain or neck pain. And the seven minutes a day, you'd be surprised if you set a timer for seven minutes right now and you did some physical therapy exercises. If you stretched your chest, if you marched in place to get your heart rate up, if you took two pound dumbbells and you did some bicep curls or some rotator cuff exercises, if you took a band and you put it around your ankles and you walked sideways and you worked your hips, if you did your suck it in exercises, like my new book coming out, suck your stomach in, march your legs, really pull your belly button and work your deep core to get rid of your back pain. If you do that, if I can talk for seven minutes, let's see, we've been on the air for about 10 minutes now. If I can talk for 10 minutes, you can exercise for 10 minutes or you can skip dessert a couple days a week to get your long-term goal. So I also want to talk about Darren Hardy's The Compound Effect. I've been listening to Darren Hardy via Darren Daily for about four years now, and it is transformed each day that I listen to him. I am on a mission to help people feel better, have less pain, and I also want to enroll them to really know that they can do it, that they themselves can be the honorary physical therapist. That's why I do these shows, to bring it to you in your home, the tips that you can do. That's why I did Movement Matters for two years. So you can learn everything you want to know if you have pain at home and you don't have access to a physical therapist or you can't get into a massage therapist or your chiropractor or anybody like that. I want you to know that you can do these things safely and find yourself feeling better right away. You don't have to be afraid. So Darren talks about not focusing on the short-term desires, but focusing on the long-term freedom. And Rory Vaden also talks about and take the stairs, 
the paradox of sacrifice on how we all emotionally think that if we are going to skip on dessert or skip on that coffee, we feel like stressed or we're lacking. But if we think about in five years, how we're going to feel if we don't make that tiny short-term sacrifice, that's what you want to focus on. You want to focus on in five years, how will I feel if I still have this extra weight on and I still feel like I need to do something for my body? And that's what you need to focus on when you're going to get that seventh Starbucks for the week or you're going for that seventh dessert for the week. It's just think, hey, you know what? If I don't have this today, I'm going to feel good in five years versus if I have this today and I satisfy my sweet tooth, I'm going to feel bad later. I will feel very short term happiness and success. But then tomorrow I'm going to say, oh, shoot, I didn't get to do that. So anyway, be easy on yourself. This is all a process that all of us go through in life to lose weight, to get fitness or to do something we don't want to do or restrict ourselves from something that we really enjoy. I have a question. Should I pay attention to calories or fats or both? I'm not sure of the difference. <clears throat> That's a great question. So I love The Zone Diet by Barry Sears. It is a great book that really teaches you about nutrition. It's a diabetic diet. And what I love about it, uh, when patients have been yo-yo dieting over my 25 year career as a physical therapist, I wanna help you in my office, not just your ailment, I wanna help you. And so when people are complaining of trying to lose weight and ha not having success, I wanna help. And so I've done a lot of reading over the years and for myself, of course, I tried it and, and I loved that. I've dabbled in these things myself just to see what the buzz was. But the zone talks about the 30, 30, 40 program. And to answer your question, whatever calories you use during the day, you don't want to exceed that to maintain the weight that you have right now. That's the bottom line. So if you burn 1500 calories a day, you don't want to have 3000 calories a day. Otherwise you will be in a calorie surplus. Now where that gets complicated is let's say you exercise for an hour every day. So now you're going to burn more calories a day and you need more calories in to sustain your body weight, sustain your muscle mass. So you don't lose muscle. Now that 30, 30, 40 program talks about 30% protein, 30% carbohydrates. Cause you need the sugar for your brain and 40% protein. So did I say that right? 30% fat, 30% carb, 30% uh, protein, 40% carbohydrates. I said it wrong. That's the right way. And so in the zone book, it's great because, and you probably look online, I'm sure there's websites now. I was a book reader back in the day and it describes to you, you could put in your weight and your activity level and figure out your lean body mass, which is like your muscle mass. And that's, if you want to lose weight, what you need to maintain is your lean body mass. And I have tried the zone and it's, it's actually really easy. I never measured everything. They talk about, you know, the protein you need in a meal is about the size of the palm of your hand. And they give you all different kinds of protein sources. And then they talk about the different kinds of fat and how the importance of fat in your diet at each meal and how it works. I'm not a nutritionist, but I know what they say is that the reaction that your body has when you eat fat in a meal sets off this chemical process that then releases something else, another chemical that slows how fast insulin enters your bloodstream. And the zone is great about talking about your hormonal carburetor. They are trying to control your insulin levels so that you have steady energy all day long. That's why they encourage snacks and certain kinds of snacks and that you don't have those sugar highs and lows. And so the 30, 30, 40 will put you, as Barry says, in the zone. It will put you in the zone where you don't feel like I'm getting tired, I need to eat more, or you don't feel excessively hungry. And so for an example of a zone meal, uh, not to plug McDonald's, but the Egg McMuffin, not that I th think everybody should go to McDonald's because you can make it at home, but if you have an, egg, um, an English muffin, you put an egg on there, a little Canadian bacon. If you eat meat, a uh, piece of lettuce to get your greens, some tomato, that's kind of like a zone meal or cottage cheese with fruit because the cottage cheese, the low fat has the fat, the protein. You add some fruit for sugar. A lot of people that came to me were having oatmeal for breakfast, which is healthy, so heart healthy, but pretty much all carbohydrates. 
And then for lunch, they were having salad again, pretty much great, healthy for you, but all carbohydrates. And if you add dressing that adds your fat, <clears throat> but where you want to make it a zone meal for your oatmeal is you need to have oatmeal with some sort of protein source. So if you drink milk, you can have a glass of milk. You have to look for skim and 2% though, because the skim milk has a little bit more carbohydrates, I believe, and the 2% has a little bit more protein. So you're going to have to kind of look at some labels to see how you can balance your proteins, carbohydrates, and fat. So remember, you need to do calories in, calories out. And if you exercise, you need to add calories for that. But if you go into a calorie surplus in what you intake versus what you output, you're not going to lose weight. So I hope that answers your question. I have a few more questions. I've never really worked out before. How do I start? I always tell people that you don't want to run a marathon before you learn to jog. And so if you've never started a workout routine, set yourself for a 10 to 15 minute period and don't just go run. I, we saw too many injuries uh, during the pandemic, foot and ankle injuries, knee injuries from people starting a walking program and really going for it. And they had calves that were tight. They had arches that were collapsed. They had a hip that was weak. And then they ended up getting a knee arthritis aggravation from walking without the proper um, muscle structure to support themselves while they walk. Start small, make that small, seemingly insignificant change. Set your timer for 10 minutes, go for a walk around the block for a week. And then the next week, if you feel good and you're not sore and nothing is getting achy, then you walk a block and a half for the next week. And then the third week, you walk two blocks. That's the compound effect you do a little bit over time, like saving money in a piggy bank. If you put a quarter in your piggy bank every week in a year, you would have X amount of dollars and you would never know it because you just threw the quarter in there. So small changes to a healthy body and a healthy fitness routine. If you're lifting weights, how about you try two sets of 10 every other day to see how you do. And then if you start feeling well, I always tell people, increase your reps to three sets of 15 so that you get the lighter weight and the more repetitions earlier on to avoid strain. Once you can do that and it's easy, then you can add the weight and go back to your sets of 10 again so you can increase more strain to build more muscle. Oh, I don't like to cook. How do I eat healthy? That's a great question. It might be a better question for Google, but I think lots of my friends don't like to cook and there's a lot of healthy options. And one of the things, if you want to lose weight and you want to gain health is to avoid those processed packaged foods. So if you don't like to cook, I suggest you going online and looking up some of those meal delivery services. I know the zone actually has a meal delivery service, but there's also nowadays with the pandemic and even before with the booming of us having the easy access at our fingertips. There's so many uh, prepared meal delivery systems where you can get things delivered to you that are healthy, like zone meals or, you know, many of the other, there's so many, uh, so many different places that offer that, but you might have to do a little Googling because I don't know where to send you other than to the zone uh, for the meal delivery system. And I've got another question. How do I know what exercises to do? That's a good question. I wish, I wish my guests were there to answer that for you, but I think it depends on your goals. So if your goals are to um, increase the strength in your upper body, then I would need to direct you towards certain exercises for that. That's what I do in the clinic, or we can do a virtual visit for me to show you quickly what kinds of things you can do. If you want to strengthen your legs because you're going to train for a marathon or you're going to do a bicycle race, then there's a different set of exercises that I would prescribe for you to strengthen all those body parts to not only improve your performance, but also more importantly, to prevent injury so you can enjoy it. I know my runners and my walkers that started when I saw them in the clinic with an injury, I tested their hips and I said, you know what, you got to do these right before you walk because you don't have the adequate hip strength to support your leg when you're walking up and downhill. You need to stretch your calves. You don't have enough range of motion. So contact me. You can contact me at clindersrun at gmail.com. I can get you set up with a virtual visit. We can do a quick little uh, video conference so I can show you the exercises specifically for your goal. Okay, so I think I got everybody's questions answered and I just want to inspire all of you in 2022 
to do something better for your body, whether it's you want to take off a few pounds because you want to feel better or take off a few pounds because you really need to, because you need to improve your health, lower your cholesterol, get rid of your diabetes by losing weight. So there's less stress on your body, less stress on your insulin system, whatever the goal it is. If you want to improve strength because you're aging and you're in your seventies or eighties and you're noticing that you're losing your balance. If you want to gain flexibility because you just retired and you can't golf without back pain because you've gotten stiff from your desk job, all those things you can accomplish with a small change consistently. And I think that's the message that I want everyone to take home. Listen to me, listen to Darren Hardy and the compound effect and realize one small change today in a year is a huge, huge, huge difference. Listen to Rory Vaden, who takes the stairs and he talks about how you can also make that seemingly insignificant change over time and have that short-term sacrifice for that long-term effect. And finally, pay attention to your emotions and realize that we humans are all the same and we make decisions on a daily basis based on our emotions. And the emotions that we are making decisions on is we want to feel good and not bad in the short term. We want to feel comfort and not discomfort in the short term. So when you go think about your decisions, think about now going forward, is this an emotional decision that I know will bring me short-term comfort, but maybe long-term pain or long-term discomfort, or it will be bring me short-term ease or happiness, but long-term dis-ease or discontent. So on that note, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you everyone for joining me today. I hope you gained a lot about making small changes every day to reach your goals in the long term. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you to Think Tech Hawaii for allowing us to be here. And as always, life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. Aloha, everyone.